Thank you so much for coming for this interview. We are very privileged and highly honoured, and it's great to be here, especially in your own country. We understand that your mother became a minister, and your father was uh, quite high up in the Constitutional Council. So you grew up in a political family, like from young. Uh, yes, my parents were first involved in education, and my mother was a director of uh, one primary school. My father, twice, he was uh, Secretary of State mm -hmm. in the Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. so still education. On 1958, Prince Yanuk at that time was head of the state. Right. He allowed finally women to be candidate. And immediately my father Push my mother oh. to be the candidate and yeah. she refused and she said no I'm happy I didn't want to become member of parliament but my father pushed her so much encouraged her uh, asked her sister her old sister to push her <laughs> her a young brother push us both of us uh, you know push as well. yes <laughs> and when my mother asked us mm. if we want to see her candidate we didn't understand much about politics, you mm. know. My, my sister was only 11 years old, I mm. was 16. And we said, yeah, 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 we want you to That's become. Right, money, yeah. Yeah. Because we heard of our father. Yeah, yeah right, so right. finally she became candidate, the only one. Did she have any opponents during the election? Yes, six, seven candidates, oh, okay. all male. Right. My mother had a constituency not far from here, Kandal, mm -hmm. about 20 kilometers from the capital, from Phnom Penh. And I used to go with her to see how she made her, her campaign, her political speeches. campaign speech. Yeah. So right. I look at her, very interested. Mm -hmm. And seven other candidates, all male, wow. very rich. My mother, my parents were not rich. So I remember she said, I don't have money to give you. Mm -hmm. I only have idea and mm. promise, and I try to do all my best to keep my promise to you. But other invite the chief of the village for dinner, for lunch, uh, gave a lot of gift, you know, um, etc. But my mother didn't do that. But as there were more than women in whole Cambodia, at that time already 52% of adults that could vote were women. Oh. So my mother, and in Kandal, there were few uh, factories. Right. And my mother knew pretty well that the worker, were, most of the worker were women. Right. So she addressed herself to women and she said, I know that your salary, you, you did the same work as men and you didn't have the same salary. So I promise you that if you vote for me, I will do all my best to get the same salary. Wow. And then another thing that she promised also for maternity leave. Sure. Most of you have children, and if the owner of the factory cut your salary, it's not at all good. So I promise that if I'm elected, you will have the full salary during the three months of maternity leave. And for these two reasons, she, will, she, she was elected. elected. And she was appointed as Minister of Social Action and she put her promise into consideration, into, action, right? into yeah. force. What made you want to be a doctor? Because you became the first woman to become a fully qualified medical doctor in Cambodia. Uh, that when I was in, um, in Preveng, I was seven years old. We just finished the war, Second mm. World War. It was... 45. And in Preveng, the, um, the um, hospital, we didn't have a doctor, only nurse. Mm -hmm. And my father was absent for about a month. And during his absence, I was sick. Mm. I had malaria. I was so sick, uh, could not eat, you know. And, and the, the, the nurse, there was one nurse, he didn't make the diagnosis. He only gave me a lot of antibiotic. Mm -hmm. It didn't work, you see. So when my and lost a lot of weight, of course, lost all the hair. Sure. I was really skinny and waiting for to die. And seven years old is very hard for for a girl like that. And then I pray. I made a promise. I said, if 
Devara help me to to recover. I will do. I will study medicine and spend all my life to help other, especially children, poor children, poor women, etc., who have no possibility to get a good medical care. This is the promise that I did Amen. to myself. And when my father came back, when he saw me, he was so sad. He said, "Oh my God, she's going to die." And he said, "Oh, it looked like the uh, the three phase of malaria. Maybe he looked at the the book, or he heard people told him like that." He said, "Okay, I have nothing to lose." He didn't trust at all the the nurse who gave me a lot of mm. antibiotic penicillin. Mm. You know, it didn't work. Yeah. So he went to the market and he bought quinine. Quinine, yeah. Yeah, quinine. And he said, "Okay, I'm going to give you." And I remember, I still remember that he was shaking like that because he didn't know how to, to do. He d look at the book, where to inject, you know, right. here, not to touch the nerve, etc. And he made the first injection to me. Wow. Oh, I felt so so well, you know, after one first injection. Right. The second one, I remember that I asked my mother to give me some food. Mm. Third, he did only ten. Normally, it's not so. Mm. Uh, you had to do more, you yeah. know. But with ten, you recovered. Uh, yes, and start eating, etc. So from that day, I told my father, "You saved my life the second time. You gave me the life, and now you <laughs> gave me mm. a second time." And I will become medical doctor from seven mm -hmm. years old. And every year, I said, "Okay, I'm going to study very hard and become medical doctor." Because your your parents were both pretty high up in society, in a sense, right? Do you remember getting to know Prince Yonik himself or his family quite well? I mean, there must have been occasions when you must have met the prince, right? Yeah, uh, my mother. Yes, mm -hmm. she was very. Um, um, Very familiar for the palace. Mm -hmm. um, on 58, 59, when we, when she was uh, member of parliament, Queen Kosama would like to find a good uh, professor, very serious one, that can take care of her all grandchildren. They went to school. To the uh, public school, right. but when they come home, they have to make their homework, right. study the the lesson, etc., etc. So the, she found my my mother, and so my mother went to the palace every day to pick up the prince, princess, include the king, oh, right. king, king um, Sihamuni. Right. When I met King Sihamuni the first time. He was only five years old, right. so I hold him. <laughs> He was very cute, right. very right. cute with his young brother. Right. And um, she brought them to school. My mother brought them to our house, and then she put them in one small table, one by one, and and forced them to make their homework. Right. <laughs> so she was very. Uh, Uh, familiar to the palace, uh, and as she was a minister of social action, and later on minister a second time of health. Right. So she knew uh, she met Prince Yanuk several times. My father also, because at the end, my father was also one time minister of information, mm -hmm. and for three years before the the. Prince Yanuk was deposed before 70. He was appointed as a High uh, Secretary General of the High um, Council of Throne. Right. So his office was inside the palace. Oh, right. So both of them were very uh, familiar with the palace with Prince Yanuk. For me, I met him sometime, but I was not. I didn't work with him. When I, um, on 1971, when right. I left Cambodia, because also my father was very sick. Right. My father had a ulcer mm -hmm. of the stomach before I was born. Right. And when we know that when you have a big stress, it can be very bad. Up, yeah. Yes, and he had hemorrhagia, and that can be. Uh, 
dangerous. you know, dangerous for mm -hmm. his life. So when the, the coup arrived, and then uh, Prince Yanuk was deposed, and we had civil war, my father was very worried, and then he started having problems again. And I said, okay, we have to bring you to Paris right. again. You cannot stay in that environment. So I decided to go. And London decided that uh, he didn't want the official, uh, Cambodian official, to join Prince Yanuk in, in Beijing. And when London sent an official letter to all the Cambodian embassy in the world, include in France, saying that the civil servant, high ranking of civil servant, should come back to Cambodia immediately. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, you are considered as a traitor of the wow. nation. Yes. My father sent a, me a medical certificate to, to Phnom Penh, mm. saying that here, I'm sick, so yeah. I need a few more months to, to treat myself. He didn't, he didn't acknowledge that. Oh. And we were declared traitor. We, I said, the whole family. my young sister, my, se uh, my young sister, my parent, my young sister, and myself, Four of us, family of Pung, I didn't do anything. My young sister, she was still a student, right. you know. Right. We didn't do anything, you know, concerning politics, etc. And my parents, even them, they went to front with only a, a small bag like that. Right. So we were considered as a traitor Traitors. of the nation. And if we came back, we would be uh, executed. We could not come back. And after one year, on 1972, my father said, okay, if they consider me as a traitor, I will join Prince Yenu. He moved to Beijing, and right. I stay in Paris, right. uh, continue to study medicine and work uh, in Paris. And on 73, I follow my, uh, my future husband right. in, um, in, um, in uh, Vancouver, Vancouver, you see? So uh, this is, uh, and at the beginning, I didn't want to do anything concerning, you know, uh, the peace, etc. But when I was, uh, they consider me as a traitor, it hurt me a lot. Sure. On 75, when the uh, Vietnamese, uh, no, 75, the, the Khmer Rouge mm. occupied the, uh, the uh, Cambodia mm. and then tried to, uh, to, Kill almost almost all, and then I didn't have any new from my uh, my relative. So from that time, I start becoming uh, involved in politics. You see, I remember I was in 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 Vancouver. There was a council general of China, so I always met him and asked him question about what going on in Cambodia. Did he hear something? Mm -hmm. I don't know why I want to go and visit my parents in, in Beijing, you see? Beginning of 75, right. January, I didn't know that Phnom Penh will, be, will surrender on April. The day that I took the uh, airplane from Vancouver, uh, from Seattle, it was 17th of April. Right. It's coincidence. Yeah, coincidence. I didn't know on January that the 17 uh, Phnom Penh will surrender to Khmer Rouge. Right. You know? yeah. I took, when my late husband accompanied me to Seattle to take the airplane, we saw a big title in the newspaper, Phnom Penh surrender. Wow. So I was scared. I said, oh, if I arrive in Beijing only at the end of April, like my trip, That's you know, right. maybe my parents and Prince Yanuk went to Cambodia already. For me, if Phnom Penh surrender, Prince Yanuk will go back. Right. So when I arrived in Hong Kong, I called my parents in Beijing. And he said to me, don't worry. Can't keep your, your itinerary, don't change anything. Right. It was not immediate. So when I went to, to Beijing, when I arrived, about 30 Cambodians coming from, from France wait with Prince Yanuk to go back to Cambodia. Right. And in my mind, I said, if he go back immediately, I will go also for one month. Mm. Can you imagine sure. the rest? Yeah. 
So fortunately for me and for my parents, for my parents, for my children and for me, and for a lot of Cambodians that stay with Prince Yanuk at that time, nobody come to invite Prince Yanuk to go to Cambodia. Let me short circuit now and come to the most critical role that you played in bringing the two parties together because you brokered that peace, right? That meeting. Um, at that point, Hung Sen had already become like the boss when you were um, brokering the peace. Because many attempts were made to bring the king and the Hung Sen together at some yeah. point, but all, all were failures, right? Yes. When I was in Angola, uh, in um, um, Vancouver, I met a man, Mitterrand. He was at that time um, head of uh, Socialist Party. Mm. My late husband knew him uh, very well, mm. but not me. Mm. I had the, um, the pleasure to meet Madame Mitterrand and mm. the wife of some Socialist mm. leader. So we had uh, a good uh, contact, and I took this opportunity to ask Mitterrand for help, Cambodia. I said, right. look at, it was 77, 78, something like that, you see. I said, look at, it's very bad in Cambodia. We have no new, we don't know what the Khmer Rouge did to, I lost a lot of my relative. And Mitterrand promised me, saying that 81, 1981, it will be a new, election for uh, uh, President of the Republic of France. And he said if he, Mitterrand, has the chance to be elected, he promised me in front of his wife, of uh, mm -hmm. all his uh, colleagues, that he will do anything to get peace for Cambodia. Mm -hmm. right. I said, and if Khmer Rouge continue to, uh, to um, control the country, what are you doing? He said, if the, the Khmer Rouge allow me, I will visit them in Cambodia. Mm. Wow. Mm. Because we know that Khmer Rouge will not do something to the yeah. president of French right. Republic. No, right. yeah. you know. Oh, thank you very much, etc. And I continue to pray for him mm. <laughs> since that time, right. you know. And in 82, when we moved to, and 81, he was elected. Elected president, yeah. And he appointed my husband as ambassador to Angola. When we arrived on, in Angola in on 1992, uh, we uh, know that Angola and Cambodia at that time had the same political regime. Right. You see? And I know that one day uh, someone from Phnom Penh will go and visit them, and it happened. Right. Yeah. 82, a few months after my arri our arrival. Uh, led by the Minister of Foreign Affairs at that time with some colleague that still here, like so it's Mr. Prime Minister Hun at that time, Minister of Foreign Affairs Hun Sen, with two or three other, went to visit uh, uh, Angola wow. in an official visit. Right. And as I had a very good relation with um, the uh, Angolese uh, Foreign Minister, Mr. Paolo George, who used to speak fluently French mm -hmm. because my Portuguese was not so good mm -hmm. at that time. Right. And he invited me to meet uh, Hun Sen. And I invited him to the residence without asking permission from my late husband. <laughs> I decided when I met him, I said, do you want peace for Cambodia? Because why you fight against mm. each other? And he said, yes, we want peace. I said, okay we try to put you with Prince Yanduk because mm. my parents are very, we are very close uh, with Prince Yanduk. So uh, why we don't do that? And then you can get peace for Cambodia. He said, I'm not against that idea. So I invite him with all the delegation to our uh, residence. And um, after when he left Angola, I left Angola on 86, come back to Paris to my father said, Prince Yanduk, will come to Paris on September 87. Right. So you should go to see him at the airport and ask him for a, a, a meeting. I met him, he was surprised to see me, and when I explained, he said, okay, 24, two days after, he invited us to meet him in Ferrantin de Noir, about mm -hmm. 120 kilometers from Paris. So we met him for six hours, and he decided to see him. 
It was not easy no. because French didn't recognize yet, but thanks to Mitterrand, uh, we had some uh, privilege. You know, normally the uh, the French uh, should not uh, invite uh, the delegation from Phnom Penh because they don't recognize the regime yet. But Prince Yanuk uh, helped us to get the visa. Right. And the first meeting happened on the 2nd December 1987. Right. And the organizer <coughs> was only four of us, my parents, my late husband and myself. No, no one helped us. Right. For the Cambodian delegation, we could not even get the car for them. No. We could not get the hotel for them. Right. So we have, I had to go and borrow two cars from the ambassador of uh, Soviet Union right. in Paris at that time. <laughs> That's strange enough. Because Prince Yanouk yeah. asked me not to have any contact with Vietnamese. Right, sure. Vietnamese embassy in Paris, Paris no. Yeah. But so we How was Indian, that first okay. meeting? How was that meeting? Uh, very good. Mm. I didn't go because my father, who was very uh, wise, wise person, told mm. me be careful because many people try to, to arrange the meeting. Yeah, Cambodian yeah. delegation mm. arrived in Paris, mm. but Prince Yanou mm. sent mm. a mm. telegram saying, I cannot go. Why? Mysterious, right. we don't know. So my father said, don't talk to the press. Yeah. Nothing, you do that, you know, behind the curtain, didn't talk to any person. We don't know who won, who didn't won this meeting. So I follow the uh, advice of my father and we succeed. Right. When the meeting happened, I didn't want to go because um, I feel a little bit, uh, embarrassed, you know, because many of my friends who were journalists came to our apartment and said, what going on? What going on? Mm. You did something. I said, no, 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 nothing. <laughs> so I was embarrassed to lie to my, mm. my, my best friend, mm. you know. Uh, I didn't go and it was good. Yeah. What made you want to come back to Cambodia? When I saw in the peace, the draft of the peace agreement, I saw the Khmer Rouge were also part of the, uh, of the uh, peace agreement, signed also, etc. I, my heart was broken, you yeah. know. When I organized these two meetings, I didn't want to involve Khmer Rouge. For me, Khmer Rouge, I didn't recognize them. They were criminal, they should be tried. Like after the Second War, sure. World War, you see. The Nuremberg, yeah. Yes, so when I saw that, I said, oh, what can we do? Nothing. So with some of friends, my parents, my late husband and my daughter, friend of us, we said, we are going to set up an association, maybe a league of human rights, to monitor the work of the Khmer Rouge right. in Paris first, what they are doing. And when they come to Cambodia, we have to come with them because maybe they would like to bring back this bad regime, you know, to Cambodia. So we had to be very, very alert. Sure. And we set up Likado, Likado yeah, yeah, in Paris first mm -hmm. with the law, you know, 1901. Yeah. Very easy. Three person can set up. Uh, yeah. right. And we set up and we monitor. So when Ian Seri went to Paris with, uh, and um, he went to visit his uh, children in London, we used to to alert all of our friends, follow what mm. he, you know, really we, yeah. we are care. Monitor and when, him. Yeah, <laughs> and when he, they came to Cambodia, kill some porn, etc. we came to Cambodia also. Right. And at that time, UN, UN yeah. came to Cambodia, UNTA, that we call, yeah. United Nations Transitional Authority in Cambodia. Um, we said, okay, we continue to do our work to monitor what they are going to do. Are they going to kill Cambodian people again? Mm -hmm. So this is the, the main reason for Likado at the beginning. And we decide, okay, we work with, with UN, and UN can maybe help us how to monitor the election because it's all new for us, right. you know? Mm -hmm. And as a medical doctor, 
I went with uh, myself, with um, a medical doctor from uh, Médecin du Monde, uh -huh. to give medical care to this prison. Uh -huh. And from that time, 92, until now, we continue this program. Uh -huh. So by doing, at the beginning, just a group to monitor the work of Khmer Rouge, and then as a medical doctor, and then we provide medical care to prisoner, and then later on to also people outside, like women, uh, victim of domestic violence, of rape, of trafficking, etc. You see, it's it's become now and more and more our our job, uh, right. daily job, and I could not withdraw myself. It like a spiral, you know. Yeah. Yeah. When I go, I cannot get out now. I, I cannot even, I, I want to say, yeah. okay, now it's time to be maybe far from this. No, it's not possible because it's, it's go on and <laughs> on and on and on. You have mentioned your father in this interview many times, but you also yeah. mentioned many times that one of the things that your father seems to have had mm -hmm. was wisdom. Mm -hmm. He was very wise, mm -hmm. you said mm -hmm. many times. Very you think wise, wisdom yeah. is a very essential quality of a leader, a good leader? Um, my opinion, yes, I think so. I think that is very important for a good leader. If you don't have that... Would you, you say that one of the major challenges, if you use that word, mm -hmm. for Cambodian leadership mm -hmm. has been that they have had you know, the normal resources and strength and army and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, power and all that? But probably they didn't have wisdom. Mm -hmm. Because if they had wisdom, the history of Cambodia would be very different. That is missing. That is yeah. missing. Because you have power is good, power, but your power comes from where? From the people. Right. You have to get the trust of the people. You have to, to see that people trust you, people respect you. The respect, you know, you don't need to, to force people. If people respect you because they are scared of you, it's not good. Yeah. They respect you because they love you, yeah. because they are, trust you. They know that they can count on you. You see, it's very important. I want to bring this interview to a gentle close mm -hmm. by asking you two mm -hmm. personal questions. Mm -hmm. One is, you're a leader yourself, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I don't consider myself as a leader. No. I consider myself as a, a mother of some, you know, no, no. in, in Likado, <laughs> in Likado. I don't want my uh, colleague to call me uh, madame uh, or madame or president. Here, our culture, our habit, we are like family. Sure. So if they are a little bit younger than me, they call me big sister sure. or aunt. Sure. So we like that. It, sure. it's, I feel close to them. Sure. Yeah. And, and in that sense, you're the leader of a very <laughs> huge family, yeah. right? a very, very big family. They trust me. They trust I, you. Yeah. And that's a very critical, yeah. yes. critical point. This is my uh, reward. You right. know? They trust me. They respect me when they talk to me. I don't need to say, respect me or trust me. No, no, no. When they have problem, they come to me. And yeah. then I encourage them. And I am honest with them. If I don't mm. know, I said, you know, it's not because I went to France to study that I know everything. Right. This is I don't know. So let's find out together. Right. Thank so my final much. question is, and I think this is now public knowledge, right? Yeah. That uh, the Prime Minister has invited you, yeah. maybe once or twice, to sit yeah. on some council or yeah. some... Can you share with us? Because I hear that you decline. Yeah. yeah. Uh, first of all, on 1997, he would like to set up a... Human Rights Committee, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to join because for me, I didn't want to join a, a Human Rights Committee without having first to uh, draft a law. Right. And I want to, to join only a committee that uh, uh, having a lot of participation of people. We would like to have a National Human Rights Commission, uh, and we would like to have this commission independent, conform to a international standard called Paris Principle, right. with participation of many, many people before. Right. You know, this is serious because it's independent. It can provide 
if I want to join some institution, it's not for myself. I, I don't want to be, you know, in the first front. No, no, no. I would like to do something for Cambodian people. And to be useful for Cambodian people, you should have an institution independent that really serves the interests of the people. people right. And having the trust of many, many people. This is the definition of democracy. Right. That is one. So it's 1997. And recently, he invited me, but um, I put my condition. I said, I can accept if this institution can be really independent, if I can work in that institution, seen as independent with a legal uh, framework, you know, with a good law, uh, three conditions, um, this institution can control the uh, human resource can control the financial resource, and can have immunity. Right. And I see that none of the condition is uh, is met. It's been a great pleasure yeah. talking to you, Nobel Prize uh, nominee Thank for you. twice, right? You yes. are nominated, yeah. so hopefully one day you will still <laughs> get it.